You've run some frequency analyses and means on your data, and now you may be wondering whether there is a difference between how somebody answers a question based upon perhaps a variable such as their sex. If that's the case, you're interested in running some bivariate analysis. Today we'll look at cross-tabulation analysis. There are other types of bivariate statistics that we'll discuss later, such as t-tests and ANOVAs, but right now we'll focus on cross-tabulation. The same caveats apply that you know how to set up an SPSS file and know when to use the various statistical tests, and that we are focusing just in this case on cross-tabulation because that's a statistical test that you're likely to use for our class assignment. You may be asking yourself why you might even run cross-tabulation analysis. Cross-tabulations look for a statistically significant relationship between two variables. Those variables are each gathering nominal or categorical level data. They use chi-square to determine whether the differences that you observe might be statistically significant, that is, not likely due to chance or sampling error. It's important that you understand here the difference between an independent variable and a dependent variable. The independent variable is one that might have some sort of an effect on the outcome that you observe on the dependent variable. Let's talk about this just a little bit more. Let's say that you have a variable of sex. A person's sex might cause them to answer another question differently. Males might answer the question of whether their math skills are better than average, average, or less than average differently than females might. So let's assume that we're determining whether somebody's math skills are dependent upon what their sex is. So we assess as good or bad, we run the analyses, and now we want to determine whether men answer this question differently or not. Note that being male or being female does not cause an assessment in math skills to be different but they may be correlated with each other. In this case, the variable of sex would be the independent variable because the answer on the math skills part might be dependent upon their answer to the sex question. So math skills then would be the dependent variable. Please note that we are looking for correlations. Other words that you might think of might be associations or relationships between the variables. It's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to prove causation. If you were to prove causation, you would say that being male causes the change in the answer to math skills, rather than that being male correlates with a difference in their answers on the math skills question. Note that you may need to recode or group data to ensure sufficient cell sizes. If you have a small survey sample, you might not have enough, for example, in the 18 to 24 year old age group to run a cross tabulation that will identify statistically significant differences. The number of people in that cell for the 18 to 24 year old might be too small to have a valid test. So you might have to recode that, that is combine that with another category. For example, you might combine the 18 to 24 year old age group category with the 25 to 34 year old age group category, creating a new category called 18 to 34. Very simple procedure for this one. Analyze descriptive statistics, just like you did for frequencies, only now you choose cross tabs. Some additional things that you will want to check is contingency coefficient and phi and Kramer's V. And you'll also want to go to the cells part and check counts for observed and percentages for rows. So what you'll be looking at is a dialog box that looks like this. Now the red wording in here is what I've put in there. So here you can see sex is an independent variable and that goes in the rows column and their assessment of driving goes in the column section. Under cross tabulation statistics, you're choosing contingency coefficient and phi and Kramer's V. Now chi-square shows up there, but you don't have to choose chi-square because when you run contingency coefficient and phi and Kramer's V, you automatically have chi-square calculated for you. And again, in the cross tabs cell display, I want you to check the row box. So now, Let's do it. Could a person's sex make a difference in their assessment of their driving? So again, in this case, 
sex would be the independent variable because that might have an effect on their assessment of their driving, which would be a dependent variable. Here we are in our SPSS file. We'll do Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs. You'll scroll on down and we will get Sex and put that in the Rows box. And then we want to do it on Driving, so Driving will go in the Column box. Here's Statistics. You'll want to click Contingency Coefficient and Fee in Kramer's V. And then under Cells, you make sure you have Observed and we choose Row. Continue. OK, and there they are. So here is the table. And the way you read this table is when you count across, it adds to this number or to this number. So we had no males who said that their driving was much worse than average. None said that it was worse than average. You had four of them, or 19% of the males in this survey, assess their driving as just average. Eight of the 21 males, or 38%, said that their driving skills were better than the average person, and 9, or 43%, said that they were much better than average. You could do the same thing with females, but the most important part is when you compare down. So you add across and you compare down. So while 43% of males assess their driving as much better than average, that contrast with only 17.9 or 18% of females who also assess their driving as much better than average. You'll notice that more females assess their driving as worse than average than males. So again, you add across, and that is of the males, and you compare down, so males versus females. But now we want to come down to this symmetric measures table. Here is where it identifies approximate significant. So we observed a difference up here, but is that difference statistically significant? And the answer here is no, because this is the chi-square. And chi-square, you're looking for less than 0.05 to be significant at the 95% confidence level. So you have only a 0.219 here. Now the phi and the Kramer's V and the contingency coefficient, all of those are assessing what the strength of association is. This, if this were significant, then it would account for about 34, 35% of the variation in the answers is based upon a person's sex. In this case, it's not statistically significant. But if it were, it would be a fairly strong association. Here's a table that I got from Holmes.Chaz UToronto dot California that identifies the difference on the fee or the Kramer's V. I do know that there is something that looks like an error here. I have gone and checked and it identifies the same thing. But most of the time we're looking for numbers above 0.2. So between 0.2 to 0.3 is a moderately strong relationship. If you see something at a 0.3 to a 0.3 3, 5, which is similar to what we saw in the last table, that would be a moderately strong relationship between the independent and the dependent variable. Again, I want to emphasize that looking at the chi-square, it was above 0.05, so while there appears to be an association between the two variables, that is not statistically significant. One thing we can use cross-tabulation analysis for is to check some of the procedural controls, and I've asked you to do this as well. I am asking you to run a cross-tab with interviewer in the row box by data collection method in the columns box. That will produce a table that looks similar to this. You can see by looking at this that I know how many interviews of which type each person in the group completed. So in this group of four people, Mark completed three online interviews, four telephone interviews, four intercept self-administered interviews, and two intercept interviews for a total of 13 completed interviews. And I can continue making the comparisons for Sophia, Yao, and Sue. Again, I'm asking you to complete this so that I can tell that everybody did what was expected of them. 
processing time. What is the difference between independent variables and dependent variables? Can a variable be both an independent variable and a dependent variable, depending upon the situation? Which type of variables would be used for cross-tabulation analysis? And finally, can you recall the basic steps in running a cross-tabulation analysis in SPSS? That would be Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross-Tabs, and then a recommendation to choose under the Statistics window, Contingency Coefficient and Fee and Kramer's V, and in Cells, Observed Counts and Rows Percentages. You ought to be able to run a cross-tabulation analysis with very little effort at this point in time.